Hello, everyone. Welcome to Right Sleep Sleep Chats. This is a series of short videos featuring Right Sleep creator, Dr. Stasha Gomenak, answering some of our frequently asked questions, as well as some others you may not have thought of to ask. We'll tackle one question at a time to help you improve your sleep and ultimately improve your health. So, Stasha, today's question is, what is the gut microbiome and what does that have to do with sleep? Another fabulous question. So the odd part about this is I'm a neurologist and I am not a GI specialist, but lucky for me, the gastroenterology specialists have over the last, especially 10 years, learned that the bacteria that live inside us, and there are actually different bacteria that live inside our mouth and our esophagus and our stomach and our small intestine, our large intestine, and actually over our whole body. And it's not just bacteria, it's viruses and fungus also. And those microorganisms, small organisms, they're living beings, play a role in our biology. That means the bacteria that live in our intestine, and you have to picture the bacteria in our intestine is not a static, uh, single um, puff ball, let's say. Instead, picture it like a river where these bacteria that are very small are constantly reproducing themselves and making daughter bacteria. That means by the time this video is over, the bacteria that used to be sitting in your small intestine in a certain area have actually moved down. So you actually poop these guys out every day. That means the daughter bacteria are now living there. The other thing that means is the most important part of why you have certain bacteria and the next person does not is that you are supplying the bacteria with growth factors. Growth factors mean they are required substances that that particular type of bacteria needs to reproduce itself. And they're rep reproducing at an amazing rate. The major event that I stumbled into while I was giving D was that many of my clients also had irritable bowel syndrome. That disorder is kind of a goofy name, like my belly is mad at me. And it really usually means when we have a goofy name like that, it means we don't know what caused it. It is my observation that it is low D, not enough D supply to the bacteria that are living in your intestine that caused the epidemic of intestinal microbiome change that started in the 1980s. That's the first time when IBS was first reported. So when I was treating my patients as a neurologist, they had not only a vitamin D deficiency, but also they had the wrong microbiome because the bacteria that required D that was supposed to be supplied by us, by being out in the sun, if you don't have enough D, then the bacteria that need D die off and the ones that don't need D replace them. And it turns out that there are many, many parts of our biochemistry, chemicals that play a role in how our body functions that come from the bacteria. Some of them we called vitamins. Eight of those are called the B vitamins. But there are now many different chemicals that are called metabolites or products that the bacteria make that we absorb into our body and become part of messaging systems in our body. For instance, we know now that iron absorption and iron overload, both not having enough iron and having too much iron can result from not having the right microbiome, not having the right endocannabinoids, which are other chemicals that we use in our nervous system to manage pain and appetite and mood. Those are also the building blocks that become the endocannabinoids are supplied by the microbiome. So in summary, that means if you don't have a normal microbiome, you aren't really a normal human. Your whole biochemistry was built around the supply from the bacteria. And in summary, when we were told to go inside and not be in the sun, that led to a myriad of changes some of them are directly related to D, but the majority of them are related to a combination of D 
plus the loss of the B vitamins, which ultimately ends up being acetylcholine deficiency, which is one of our neurotransmitters that we must have to sleep normally. It's a neurotransmitter that is related to ADHD. It's related to anxiety. It's relating to have a bladder that doesn't work right, a belly GI system that doesn't work right. It's related to inflammation. So many of the lectures that I give are about acetylcholine deficiency that at its core is about D deficiency plus microbiome change equals acetylcholine deficiency. So our GI tract is a really important player in how our whole nervous system works, including sleep, but including multiple other things as well. Okay, very interesting, because I never would have thought that your stomach, your gut would have to do with how you sleep. So that is excellent information. All right, well, thank you, Stasha. And thank you everyone for joining us. Please subscribe to the channel like and share our videos, and you can find more information as well as the Right Sleep Program at drgomanak.com. Remember, we see our doctor once a year because we heal our bodies every night. Until the next sleep chat, sleep well. Bye-bye.